Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 reasons why your fish may not be breeding. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, now this first one, tip number 10, might seem obvious at first, but it is something that is often overlooked, and that is, are your fish just too old to breed? There are some fish that have a very limited time in which they're capable of breeding. For some fish, it might be as little as a year, or maybe even in the case of some cichlids, it might just be a couple of years. And once they get beyond breeding age, they're just not gonna breed for you no matter what else we talk about in this video. So if you've been getting a lot of spawns from your fish and all of a sudden they've stopped and they haven't spawned for you in a long time, it might just be that they are beyond the age in which they're going to reasonably breed. If that's not the case, we've got a lot of other options for you coming up in the rest of this video. So reason number nine, are you feeding the right food for your fish to breed? And this is a big one to consider. So for instance, as an example, when we are breeding our bristle nose plecos, we like to feed a lot of frozen bloodworms. We like to feed a lot of rapaci. These are very nutrient rich foods which allows the bristlenose plecos to breed a little bit easier. And so that's something you should consider. In fact, we did a video on how to feed your fish. I will put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. Definitely worth checking out. But you wanna make sure the food that you're feeding is nutrient rich and it's the food that your fish requires. That's gonna get them to breed in the optimal way. Number eight on the list is poor water quality. Make sure you are keeping up with your water changes. We've done a video on how to know when to do water changes. I'm going to put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. But you want to try to keep your nitrates below 20 parts per million. If you have a lot of stuff floating around in the water, a lot of debris, maybe you have to up your filtration. When they swim by the substrate, is it kicking up a lot of things? That can be especially true if you're trying to breed some of your bottom dwelling fish like bristlenose plecos or quarry cats. So definitely make sure that your water quality is optimal for your fish to breed. Now, I know we just talked about water quality, but there's another aspect, and that is the proper water parameters. This is absolutely huge. So for number seven, do you have the water parameters that are necessary for your fish to breed? I would say a lot of times this is a parameter that is one of the most important. It's also one of the most easily correctable if you're willing to put in the work. And so, for instance, if you're breeding a lot of the Rift Lake African cichlids, you're going to need harder water with a higher pH. If you're breeding a lot of the fish from South America, maybe your Epistogramma, or maybe your German Blue Rams, or maybe you've got some Neons that you're trying to breed, you might need softer water with a lower pH. And so you're really gonna wanna do your research as to what the proper water parameters are for breeding. There's a lot of fish that will actually do well and maybe even thrive at water parameter ranges that are really close to the edge. But if you want to breed those fish, you've got to get much closer to optimal water parameters to allow them to produce fertile eggs and so that those eggs will hatch. So as an example, a lot of the fish that breed in softer water, the eggs have these microscopic tiny pores that are used for gas exchange. If the water is too hard, that hard water can actually clog the pores on those eggs and prevent the fish from ever hatching. So make sure the water parameters, that means water hardness, pH, water temperature, proper, ox proper oxygen concentration, all of those things are correct for the fish you're trying to breed. Number six on the list, do you have the proper spawning sites? Now this may seem like an obvious one, but it isn't always the case. So for instance, if you've got cave spawners, do you have the caves? But not only do you have the caves, do you have them in the right area? And do you have them in the right size? So for instance, our bristlenose plecos, they like to breed in these caves here. I will put that video in the upper right hand corner as well. You can check out those caves, they're really awesome. They're also great for some of the dwarf spawning cichlids too, the dwarf cichlids. So do you have the right spawning area? If they like rock work, do you have the rocks set up in the proper way? Some fish like to dig pits and breed in the substrate. Do you have enough space for them to do that? So definitely consider the spawning area, and if it is set up optimally for your fish to breed. Before we continue with the top five reasons why your fish may not be breeding, I did want to mention that we are partnered with Amazonas Magazine. This is their latest issue where they focus on culturing and feeding live foods. 
This is a great magazine. If you don't know what they are, they are the premier publication when it comes to fish keeping on the face of the earth. Extremely high quality magazine. In fact, it's one of the highest quality magazines, period, out there in any genre. Like I said, in this particular issue that just came out, they're gonna be talking about how to culture live foods, how to feed live foods, as well as a lot of information on different fish species. If you've never read this magazine before, I highly recommend give it a try. They have the perfect balance of bringing some scientific information to the fish keeping hobby, but doing it in a way that anybody can understand. Now, what's really cool is Primetime Aquatics viewers, we have a special offer down in the description below. Check it out. But Amazonas Magazine is truly awesome. All right, let's get back to that top five. Number five on our list of reasons why fish may not be breeding for you. Are they stressed out by other tank mates? And so for instance, maybe you've got some angelfish and they normally breed in a six foot tank and you add in some really fast moving fish like some tinfoil barbs or ballast sharks or rainbow fish and they're moving around really fast and all of a sudden the angelfish are spending more time trying to protect their territory than they are trying to breed. And so you have to be mindful of the types of fish you're keeping with other fish if you want them to breed. Again, this is why we recommend usually doing a species only tank if you really want your fish to breed because when you mix them with other fish, they can get stressed out by the other inhabitants. Number four on the list, do you have fish in the tank that are gonna eat your fry? Your fish may actually be breeding. You just never see the fry because there are other fish in the tank that eat them before you actually realize they are there. Sometimes, sometimes the parents themselves will do that. A good example would be the peacock gudgeon. If you leave those fry in the tank, chances are they're gonna get eaten. If you've got your fish in a community tank, the other fish in that community might be eating your fish. In fact, we did an entire video on how to keep fish fry alive. I'm gonna put that in the upper right-hand corner as well as in the description below. Definitely worth checking out. We highly recommend when you are breeding fish, it's probably best to do that in a species-only tank to maximize your fry survival. So just make sure you don't have other fish in the tank that are eating your fry. Number three on the list, your fish may actually be breeding, but do you have any fish in the tank that are going to eat the eggs before the eggs actually hatch? This can be a problem in our fish room because we love to keep bristlenose plecos in most of our tanks. However, if we've got fish that we know are going to be laying eggs on solid surfaces, we try to remove the bristlenose plecos. And so a really great example of this is the geophagus, or at least some of the, a lot of the geophagus, they're gonna lay eggs on a solid surface. In fact, our geophagus tapajos used to lay eggs on a piece of slate. Well, when that was happening, I had to do one of two things. I either had to remove the eggs as soon as I saw them and put them in an egg tumbler, or I would usually keep a very dim room light on so that the parents could see if the bristlenose plecos in the tank were going to approach the eggs. Obviously, the third thing to do is remove anything that's gonna be eating the eggs like bristlenose plecos. But this can be a really important step, making sure that your fish are able to breed. Number two on our list, make sure you've got the proper male to female ratio. This is a big one. Now, what I mean by that is, for instance, a lot of our African cichlids that we've bred, it's optimal sometimes to have a male and three or four or even five females. That can be the same for a lot of your live bearers. I know the common wisdom is have one male and a couple females for a lot of your live bearers, like your guppies and your endlers, mollies and platies. I actually think that is not the best advice. If you really want to optimize your breeding and cut down on the amount of harassment the females are going to incur from the male, you're gonna to wanna to have one male and maybe four or five or even six females. That way your females aren't getting beat up by the males too much. The males have a lot of options when it comes to breeding and you're gonna maximize your success. And so when, when you are breeding fish, make sure you have the proper male to female ratio. Now, that may not be the case with say for instance, some South and Central American cichlids. You might have a male and think, well, I need three or four females only to find out that causes a lot of problems. And in fact, they would prefer to be in pairs. And the minute you have a pair, it's best to remove the rest of the fish that are the same species. So again, it's important, do your research. If you're trying to breed fish, make sure you know the proper male to female ratio. This last tip, I saved it for number one because I think it gets overlooked all too often, and that is in your species-only tanks, 
Are you starting to get some overcrowding? Are they doing too good of a job of breeding? Once you get to a certain threshold for a lot of species, they just shut down and they no longer breed. I can illustrate that with three examples in our fish room. The first one being the Neolampralagus multifasciatus tank right behind me, otherwise known as the multi-shell dweller. We love this fish. We've been breeding them for many, many years. Well, they stopped breeding. I wasn't noticing nearly as many juveniles in the tank as I had previously. And the reason for that was we started getting a lot of fish in that tank. How did we solve the problem? Well, I moved out about 40% of the adults and I sold them off at swaps and all of a sudden, a lot more fry in the tank. What was happening is we had a lot of males in the tank and they were starting to compete for territory, for shells. And they were spending more time competing with one another for the territory and for the shells than they were breeding. And that slowed them down considerably. The same thing happened in our Cyprochromus leptosoma tank. We had a lot of fish in this tank and we actually had a lot of males in the tank. And again, they were competing more with one another for space and for females. And once I moved out about half the males, we started getting more fry. Third example is our bristlenose plecos. Our bristlenose plecos have always bred for us like crazy, but we started getting too many males and what was happening is the males were competing for the caves. And once they started doing that, they focused a lot less on the eggs. I'd see them kicking out eggs out of the cave a lot more often. And so we removed a lot of the males and we started getting a lot more fry again. So number one tip I can give you is if you've got a tank that you're not getting as many fry as you used to, Maybe it's time to thin out the herd a little bit, get rid of some of the males and give the remaining males a little bit more of an opportunity to breed as opposed to competing for territory. So I hope you found these 10 tips useful. If you are getting fish that are breeding but having trouble getting the fry to survive, check out this video in the upper right hand corner. Also check out the videos in the description. They might provide a little bit more information for you. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.